A lot of times when you access a web browser user interface, you're on a subnet that doesn't necessarily give you access to the outside internet. What's going on? I'm Malachi Greb, CEO and engineer of Elite Automation. So today, what we're going to do is show you how to get internet access if you're trying to work with a web browser user interface. So a lot of times when you access a web browser user interface, you're on a subnet that doesn't necessarily give you access to the outside internet. I'm just going to show you kind of a couple little tricks. One of the ways you can go about doing that is you can have two network cards. Uh, and one thing that you'll run into is sometimes you won't be able to log into your uh, web browser user interface. In order to log into your web browser user interface, you're having to disable your network, your Wi-Fi card, or your other network card that you have on there, and then go over to your web browser, punch in your IP address here, and then you'll be able to have access to your web interface. After you get to this point within your web interface, you can generally turn back on your Wi-Fi connection or whatever Ethernet card connection you have. Uh, the secondary way of going about doing this would be to actually change your IP address on your device that you're trying to, to access. So you go through your web interface and let's say first we'll go ahead and log into this device real quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and come into our our network settings. So whatever device you have there's a place within that device to be able to set its static IP address. So just come in here and set your static IP address to be whatever your internet is. And to find out what your internet is, the quickest and easiest way to go about that is just go ahead and open up your network and internet settings, change adapter settings. Let's say for instance we have Wi-Fi here and we wanna make sure everything's on the same network. Uh, go ahead and go to status and then details. Right here it'll show you what the current IP address is of that card. Now if you have that thing set up to DHCP, you know this will be the IP address that the internet network is lying on. So now we know we can use this 192.168.4 and then so it's a .29. Uh, you may want to go ahead and, and scan your network and make sure that you don't have anything conflicting. Uh, I know for us that we have a certain range where we don't, don't assign things so we're going to go with a 4 and then we're going to submit this. Now, what's gonna happen here is we're, we're gonna lose access to this device by doing this. Uh, then when it comes back online, the one of the things you'll have to do is you'll have to come back over here to your network and internet settings again, open up your adapter, and then we're gonna go ahead and change our IP address of this card right here. So this particular card can now be changed to that same four scheme. So we have the 192.168.4.200 scheme. Uh, I'm not going to change it just yet. I just canceled that out and it did not accept those changes. But I just wanted to show you that whenever we try to go back live with this thing again, notice we're rolling up here. So what's going to happen is Google Chrome is not going to find it. I'm not going to wait for it to, to populate the error screen because I know it's going to pop up. But let's go ahead and open this again. We'll come in here, properties obtain automatically or not obtain automatically we want the 192.168.4.200 so we'll go ahead and put this card on this IP scheme here 255255 okay it okay it and another thing I always do is I come in here and I go status details just to check and make sure that it accepted the IP address that I gave it because I've ran into multiple instances where sometimes the IP address doesn't get accepted or and then you may have to do something where you either go back in and set it again or even disable and re-enable it sometimes things can get like attached to it and it doesn't want to let go of it unless you disable it and then re-enable it again uh, now that doesn't always happen but it is a fluky thing that i see happen occasionally so we're gonna go ahead and change this to a four and if everything works properly it should connect boom there we go so now we're able to have internet access along with being able to be on our web interface. Hopefully this video was useful guys. If you'd like to see any more content like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're posting tons of different content related to industrial automation, whether they be setup videos or troubleshooting videos or overall just like automation career path type of things. And at some point we'll go even deeper into like the behind the scenes of elite automation and kind of do vlog style stuff, show you systems that we're allowed to. Uh, we, we plan on diving really deep and really 
investing into this YouTube thing and investing into the our community and overall just trying to be bring exposure to the industrial automation space. So I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you for sticking around to the end and hope this video was useful.